I'm a little bit nervous. Why? I pick a tea that I suck at. I want to talk about that. I don't know why. <laughs> that means you're up for the challenge. I think so. I don't know. <sighs> Shh, I'm trying to concentrate here. I'm trying to concentrate too. Which one is your cup today? Uh, definitely not that ugly cup. I'm going to comment on that cup. This one is ugly? Uh, I don't like that cup. Hmm. All right. You ready? Hmm. Oh, I said, what? I'll say the first word and then you say something. Do you know what you're going to say? You can just throw it right back at me, okay? That's what you could do. Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to our channel. Yeah. So today I wanted to shoot a video that's a little bit different. Um, it started with wanting to shoot a video, a brewing video where I brew again. So this is kind of a new-ish trend where I'm kind of pushing myself. This is myself. the new setup now. Yeah, this is the new setup, okay? And I, um, so I, I said that, I said, hey, I want to do a video. And she said, okay, you pick the tea. And I immediately thought, oh, I'm going to brew Shui Xian. And if you guys have been watching for a while, you know I love Shui Xian. It's sort of, I have to have a favorite. I love lots of different teas. It's really hard to pick a favorite, but for the quote unquote official purpose of having a favorite, Shui Xian, particularly Lao Tong Shui Xian is my favorite. But then I thought to myself, hey, Let's be challenging. Yeah, let's push yourself a little bit here. So, and what is the tea that I find most difficult to brew? And it wasn't, it didn't take long for me to figure this out. And it's definitely green tea in a guy one. Okay, I don't have trouble with green tea in a cup. You can check out our video about how to brew green tea. And it shows you the three methods, uh, which are, um, uh, you know, they're there. Check that video out. It's fantastic. It's a really great reference, but that is how I tend to brew green tea. And at, in fact, it's actually more of like a travel mug, which mm. is also fine and works out great. But I, for whatever reason, I rarely sit down and brew green tea on a guy one. So I'm going to do that for you guys today and talk you through why I find that challenging and hopefully we'll all learn something. I'm hoping to learn something. Right? Are you going to teach me? Oh yeah, she's going to teach me. <laughs> Any comments about green tea and a guy one? No, I just look forward to it. Yeah, is it is it weird to brew green tea and a guy one, or is no. it pretty common? See, no, it's nothing it's very wrong common. with it. I just you can have... even drink from it. You can brew in it. You can do anything with it. Just uh... mental block. So today we're gonna destroy that mental block. Mm. Let's get the kettle on. just gonna pour some tea in here we picked mm -hmm. a good one today okay I said if I'm gonna challenge myself I'm gonna have a great sip and I picked Lom Jing I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna get those little guys out and call that enough okay so we picked um, um, good lord I'm oh Ming Tian Lom Jing uh, which is available on our website links in the description down below mm -hmm. uh, and I've got the right amount there while the kettle is almost ready and yeah uh, I'm gonna smell it though. I want to smell it. Oh boy. Um, it's you know it's not booming, but it's definitely got that. <laughs> what do I love mm. about Long Jin? Um, whether I uh, brew it in a travel mug, no matter where I brew it, the green tea flavor, that nutty soy, um, bright green, fresh. Um, it really makes me wonder why I don't brew more lom gin and more green tea in general. It really does have something special. And it has that uh, fuzz. The, mm. the, the hao xiang yeah, is really the fuzz sweetness. Too. It's got that, yeah. Yeah, the mm. unique uh, flavor. Okay, the kettle is boiled. Let's get our let's get our uh, brewing gear warmed up. So I'm I kind of sometimes do this little shortcut lid warming. I'm going to do it today. I didn't do the whole flip the lid over with the tool, which I love because it's fancy. Check out our other brewing videos to see that <laughs> super fun technique. I found this way I might burn myself more. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this is going to be okay. my cup here. Okay. This one's going to be yours. We'll get everybody warmed up. Mm -hmm. Let those warm up. I'm going to put the leaf into the gaiwan here and we're going to give it a... This leaf is, has a divine aroma. I really, really like it. Mm. 
I'll reserve comment until you have a smell. Oh. Eee, that's so nice. I thought you were going to reserve that until I had a smell. I just said so nice. Come on. It's not like I'm hugely influencing you. <laughs> oh, gross. What can I say? <sighs> mm. That nuttiness. Yeah, nutty matcha shortbread. Okay, that's what I was dying to say. Oh. Mm. Wow, that for a me is sweet, overwhelming a little nuttiness. Nutty. Mm, really good. Those, and it's those nuts with the not shell, the thin paper around it. Oh wow, that's clothes? too specific. Okay. <laughs> no, you can be specific as you want. I don't know. Are you talking? You're not talking about peanuts, right? With their little no, shell. No, not necessarily on. peanuts, but even oh, you mean it has every, the outer, the smell of the um. The paper, oh. the thin thing yeah. that it comes with, a lot of not have that thing I know the name it. of that. I cannot remember. We're going to put it on the screen, okay? <laughs> I know the name of that. Okay, back to Focus. brewing. Back to brewing, okay? One more. Mm, okay, I, hear, I smell what you're talking about. I think when it was a little bit hotter, it was more that overwhelming sweet, um, cookie-like sweetness mm. with, the, with the sort of green tea. I call it the matcha-y mm. aroma. That's why I always smell the gaiwan or the leaf a lot at different temperatures mm. and mm. different phases. Yes, it's not a static phenomenon. It's not like it smells like this and it's going to smell like that. It's the temperature changes. Same with the liquor. The I leaf. guess that's the beauty of the it whole is, tasting. It is, and it is. So how am I going to brew this? I'm going, I've got the leaf and the warmed gaiwan. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to just hit it with some boiling water. I better step it up. Um, some of you may be like, oh my gosh, boiling water. Check out our um water and tea or anyway we'll put a link for the video shake the leaf up i'm not going to put the lid on i'm going to put the lid off to the side in a kind of awkward position that i chose i'm going to now move that um so i can do another awkward position. yeah this table's a little bit small i would prefer to have it on the table but and i'm going to leave the lid off um this is something i learned from you and your mom jan lee Wu. um I don't, I don't always call her by her full name after I talk to Jim, but since you're there and you might not know her mom, it's Jen Lee Wu. Um, Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right? Oh, now that we say that, it sounds funny to say, but author of uh, six tea books and our tea consultant and Jen's mom. So, uh, and I'm going to let it brew. So green tea, my trouble with green tea, I want to share with you my why this is my most difficult tea to brew. Maybe one of the blockers why I brew it is I tend to rush it. I tend to um, put it, put the water on and get it out in a mm. sort of oolong or a black tea time frame. This is, makes the liquor weak and not as delicious. And um, it's just, and I don't practice enough. So I'm going to, I think in the coming days and weeks, I'm going to make a real effort to kind of enjoy more green tea. Since the spring is here. Spring is here, just for my own personal and professional development. And old gaiwan brewing, I assume? No, I'm going to mix it up. <laughs> but I'm going it's to focus so... on gaiwan. The aroma is really good. I don't right. know how to properly share that with you. I just want no that. No worries. I have some. <laughs> but it's always so nice to see the leaves of green tea too. Mm. Like it's... Um, yeah, it's just a, how they've opened up right in front of me is quite beautiful. Yeah, it's all in one enjoyment visually and uh, taste buds like. <laughs> I'm going to bring know. it out now. I had a little peek at the liquor color. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we always advocate intuitive brewing. So for me, liquor color is the big guide. I didn't, as you noticed, I didn't weigh the leaf. I didn't... Um, I don't know the volume of water. I don't know the precise temperature of the water, but I know I boiled it and I was pretty prompt to get to the water. The liquor looks really good. I think good. so. I was going to say I'm pretty happy with this liquor color. Mm -hmm. It's a bright, it's actually bright green, um, but it's clear and, and uh, brilliant and full of little, full of little fuzz. Yeah, and so when you see a good liquor, it's really like a bright, but with stuff in it. It doesn't turn mm. into uh, like It's not cloudy. turbid or cloudy or yeah. murky. It's, um, there are, yes, there are floating, um, literally it's tea fuzz floating in there, but the um, leaf ha hasn't caused the liquor to be murky. It's still mm. bright and um, resilient, clear, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, please. Oh, I was waiting for him to serve that on my little saucer. 
So my understanding for not putting the lid on is, um, and I have done it in the past and it hasn't been a total disaster, but it keeps the beauty of the leaf, you know, the leaf doesn't mm. overcook kind of thing. And I don't want to sort of support the notion that good tea are delicate and need, there's a lot of top. Like I said, you might've been surprised by hundred degrees. Good tea are not delicate and don't in general need lower water temperature. It really depends on the tea. And especially really good tea typically require boiling water to really come out. They're made for that. Why I used boiling water with this one. So refreshing. Mm. And because it's a longjing, it has it's pan fried and mm. it has that nuttiness. Like compared to a lot of uh, green tea longjing, one of the reasons it's popular because it's really accessible in terms of taste. It's not overly delicate. Mm -hmm. It is really rich. You won't have any issue detecting this full flavor, like full body flavor. Mm. I really like that. And too. I think you've really hit on one of the probably one of the mental blocks that I personally have with green tea is that delicacy. Mm. Um, even this is a quote unquote bold and refreshing and it is, it's really delightful. It has that nuttiness. It has that green, and fresh. really creamy buttery when mm. I uh, breathe out. It hits me more now that I'm but I'll finishing say this. my cup. Thing. On the other hand, I really need to use the tasting techniques that I've learned over the years to get the full appreciation of this tea. And I do think that's one of the reasons I lean away from it because it is easy to miss if you're on the go or um, maybe brewing this while you're doing some other things or just having a quick break at work. Um, doesn't mean you can't have this tea at that time. I would encourage to or encourage you to check out our how to taste tea video, which for me was revolutionary in my ability to access teas like this that are again, as a green tea goes, bold, beautiful. It's got um, those green elements, sweetness. Um, I don't quite want to use buttery. I agree with you, but it has that creamy, nutty, really nutty oil more, mm. like just delightful. Mm. But I think because they take more effort, more concentration, more focus for me to be able to access the flavor, I go for the ones, like I said, black, oolong, big and bold, pretty easy to get at. Mm. As you were saying this, I was thinking why, why I also don't drink as much green tea as, as I used to, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Just, I don't drink uh, as much green, uh, I don't drink much green tea. That's the better sentence, right? I don't drink much green tea. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, uh, and it's possible as you used to because okay. in in China it's pretty prolific, right? So, yeah, I uh, I think my reason is much simpler because green tea doesn't last long enough for me. I have to change the leaf more often, right. while the oolong or uh, you know or other mostly oolong is really I can. Put a decent amount and brew for the whole afternoon or for a while, especially you're, when I'm... You're getting one really long session or even two sessions out of it. Right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Or even when I was working, all I need to do is keep adding water. Well, green tea, I do that two, three times. It's out of flavor. Kind mm -hmm. of, I have to switch the leaves, which right. uh, I consider extra work. I think that's why I, I don't drink as much. But when I had this, uh, I was like, why? I really love that. I yeah. really love this green tea and it's really, for me, it's really full body, easy to drink green tea. Mm. Not much uh, work required. I love that. You know, I hadn't thought of that reason at all. And I really think you're on to something. I think you're hundred percent right. And that also is why we tend to brew it in um, uh, tr our, we, we have our one liter travel mug, which we often or more often brew green tea mm. in because again, we've got that duration out of it. Mm. So this one will be a little bit shorter. I think I like the color again. And away we go. Oh, you're very pro. I really love this color. The color is beautiful. The huh? liquor is so pretty. It's rare to see 
oh, I do have a green table, which is probably emphasizing the greenness of the liquor. Mm -hmm. But I really do love it. It's almost I got an emerald the quality. In it. I'm going to emerald. grab like it's it's not as I, I'm going to grab something white, just a little tissue here. Yeah, just to see. Okay, so to be more clear, it's a greenish yellow. Yeah. Um, tinge, but on this table it just looks so pretty. I know it's not emerald, but it just oh. looks so bright green. It just emphasizes right. the green. Mm. So please. For me, it's more of the radiance, the, mm. the clarity, the, the yes. that. I want to really just finish the me. first infusion before I. Wow, that sweetness. Mm. Mm. You know what? Mm -hmm. We should drink this tea, then make this tea into an omelette. A little mini omelette? Mm -hmm. I love it. We're going to make a tea omelette after this video. Because we posted that a while ago and some people was quite interested. Your mom made that, yeah, if, yeah. I, if I recall, right? Yes, mm. yes. And many of you guys are interested in like uh, tea recipes and stuff, and this can be a really easy one. Mm. Mm. Really easy to make. Sweetness level, I have to say, is sustained. It's uh, just as sweet as the first infusion. Sweet and nutty. Fresh. I don't know how to describe that fresh. That unique green tea freshness. Mm, really, it's just uh, really hard to deconstruct into other elements. Yeah, yeah, we just went through a little warm spell here after a long winter. So um, now it's minus 10 again. <laughs> yeah, but it is lovely to taste that. The, the hints of spring are obvious everywhere. The birds are starting to sing. The grass is starting to um, get uncovered from a long winter of being buried in the snow. I think that unconsciously drove me to green tea as well. Very likely. Mm. <clears throat> it's the same. Sometimes the green tea gets that kind of... Um, I feel like a certain people are not quite into green tea because they're light and they're uh, seems to be not as much mm. fun as oolong. Feels like oolong is more stuff, but but actually when you taste the green tea, I really feel the same as myself. It's really like a big oolong drinker. When I taste green tea, I have that sense satisfaction. It's not um, like talking about uh, re return sweet, talking mm. about yun, talking about the lingering power and all those. Those buds all have that. Like mm. it's really, they really, do. really think... full experience, no less than oolong. Now I'm sitting 100%. here really because this is mostly your video. Right. You're doing a lot of talking <clears throat> and I'm just kind of a tag along and enjoy no, no. the tea. I think that's a really good point. Which gave me a chance to really reflect on right, certain right. thoughts and I really enjoy that. I think there's another reason too that people gravitate, if, if you happen to gravitate away from green tea, actually, we'd love to know why. Leave a comment down below mm. for sure. Let us know if we've hit on it or if it's something else. But another one I'm going to go out there and say, and it's not it's not at all related to why I do, but it reminds me of a lot of comments we've received mm. at festivals from folks who sip a green tea that we're preparing and say, oh, I've never had a green tea that tastes like that. And I think a lot of people's experience with green tea is and they PTT, were shocked by the what do we call color? it? PTTD? I think so. Post-traumatic tea bag disorder, right? Green tea is another tea that can yeah. be found at all kinds of different cafes and places. And you will see a lot of uh, green tea color, liquor color is like mm, uh, exactly. almost like a oolong, you know, dark yellow right. brownish color. Right. And I remember uh, when they when people saw this kind of clear, is like almost like it doesn't look different than mm -hmm. pure water, like. Yeah, and that's the other comment we get. It tastes like warm water, which mm. is um, understandable. Um, again, I can't really, I'm just claiming to understand it. I can, 
No, I have to go back in time to really be fair and say yes, I can understand that. Mm. Coming from drinking uh, tea bag tea and lots of coffee, mm -hmm. the strength and boldness of those flavors are really. Uh, it's not fair if I say offensive. It's a different level of tasting. It's a very obvious level of tasting where you mm -hmm. want to be hit and you want to know there's flavor because you actually cannot miss it. It's like a bus just rolled over you. You cannot miss that. <laughs> and that's not meant to be rude or anything. Mm. But then it th with this green tea, we're diving into a new level of appreciation and of tasting and of uh, paying attention and focus. So mm. if that's not your jam to put that much effort into simply tasting something, yeah, I get it. Uh, this might not be your bag, but wow, is it ever worth it once you get over it. Anyway, what, where did that come from? It came from why maybe some people lean away from green tea because now they're into right, right. good tea and it just this reminds them of that less pleasant experience they may have had with, <laughs> with those tea bag or really, you know, like you said, oolong colored liquor green teas. Yes. Mm. And then I was, I, on the other hand, I felt like there's also difference in settings when you enjoy different teas. Mm. Uh, how, what do I mean? I mean, when I try, when I'm enjoying a great sip of a green tea, I mean, you can always have a really like a, a friend get together and have that, nothing wrong with it. But in my mind, what, what I put in visual in image is, you know, May, April in the East Coast where there's rainy seasons and mm. uh, me by myself sit beside the window hearing the rain dra uh, raindrops the whole day. And that peacefulness, I can really enjoy that uh, green tea. I can really wow. look out and that misty rain, having that uh, uh, the green on the tree and those flowers. That it's a really uh, tranquil, like a right. personal moment. Mm, I miss home. Oh no. Oh, no. 2,000 years later. I'm good now. Okay, we had a little off-camera time together. Mm. Um, I don't know if I said it earlier, but it's been a long time since uh, Jen's been able to go home. And of course, there's some uh, homesickness. I don't want to get you going again. Um, <laughs> <sighs> anyway, if you guys have a memory that is really maybe not quite so strongly associated with tea and spring or just spring or just tea or something that really resonates with you, let us know in the comments down below. Um, I think we got, I'm glad we brewed green tea. I think I'm not as bad as I thought. Right? You're actually really good. We had I a, have to say, I, I think, really enjoy those. I think foods. with the camera, with you guys here, thank mm. you for being here. Um, <laughs> it really helped me concentrate. And I realized I knew some of the reasons that I thought I wasn't so, or why I shy away from green tea. But I think I learned a few more that do actually apply to myself. Um, let us know. Hopefully green tea is your favorite kind of tea. Uh, the tea we had today is in the link down below and there's a bunch of other ones you can see on our website there. I'm mm. going to keep on brewing this. We've got at least one more infusion here. Mm. Yeah. And I think oh, I'm gonna... I didn't. Oh, oh, go ahead. I didn't finish the thought. I oh, think. Perfect in the cut. I was, when I was describing that, I just wanted to say that oh. green tea is more of a, a solitary tea. Like oh, yes. you need that moment quiet to, uh, to, to experience that, to taste that. Well, mm. oolong, it really have a social kind of a, 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 like a tasting profile as well as the brewing, you know, Kung Fu uh, brew with all those cups and share mm. with the friends, like especially the traditional Chao Shan right. style, right? You yeah, know, it's have almost pot. made to be enjoyed with people, Absolutely. whereas green tea has that. Um, and in terms of a profile, if I'm chit chatting with a lot of people and having a green tea, mm. I might totally overlook it. While the Ulo would, because it's a more, um, uh, strong, a little bit more obvious of flavor, yes. so you could actually still draw my attention mm -hmm. to the tea itself. Yeah. yeah. 
that was my oh. And yeah. I think that's a really, I'm glad you remembered to, to come back to that because that is mm. a really important one. Just the nature of the tea is fundamentally different. Mm. All right, guys. So if you got some value from this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, if you're not already, click that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click the notify bell so you'll know whenever we go live, we do uh, videos on how to brew tea, uh, vlog, travel, when we're allowed to travel again. Uh, <laughs> vlog, travel, all kinds of great stuff about Chinese tea and its culture and videos like this just to brew together and reflect on how, what the tea means to us. Mm -hmm. All right, so until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.